cool thing about this whole thing is you are never a master. There is always something you can learn. Mm. So that's one of the topics that I was talking last week mm. about lifelong learning. If you are a learner, if you take the role of learner instead of a master, then you continuously master your skills. My name is Mutagi Khan and you're watching Khan Vision. Khan Vision is a show where I get to ask questions from interesting guests. Today, I'm going to be interview interviewed by Carlo M.F. Korhonen. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another Khan Vision. I have a joke that I want to tell. I know it's not very funny, but still, jokes are nice. So, Carlo, you have to be tortured here <laughs> by listening to my joke. Um, so, there was an Englishman in England asking a Bengali guy, which one is more further away, the moon or Mumbai? Mumbai is a city in India. Yeah. And the Bengali guy said, Mumbai. And the English guy was like, what? How can you say that? So what makes you say that? And he said, well, at least I can see the moon, but I can't see the Mumbai. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess the guy is right in a weird way. Yeah, it's pretty clever. <laughs> I don't know if it's clever, but it's interesting. The, the answer was interesting. Yeah. Anyway, today we have Carlo Korhonen, one of my friends from high school not high school is that high school yeah it's, yeah it's, it's sort of a school, high school sort of. yeah and he's going and we're gonna discuss today how we got into the whole podcasting what is the story behind and carlo has carlo is one of those people who is behind my story or our story so introduce yourself carlo oh What's man up? Uh, uh first thing i want to say i'm super excited for like whatever we're gonna be doing yeah and I've been I've been waiting for this moment that we could have this like proper podcast together yeah uh, this is like it's it's been a long time coming I have yeah. to say yeah uh, pretty much my my gratitude I, I feel like that pictures me better by like just showing like what I'm grateful for the most right now yeah Carla is super humble guy and Carlo will be helping out with producing more quality podcasts. He's going to be the creative director of Khan Vision. <laughs> I like that title. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, no worries. I'll give you titles. I can't pay you right now, but yeah. maybe in the future. Let's see. Yeah. So, Carlo, what should we talk about today? Uh, basically, we, we just decided what we are talking about. Yeah. So, it's the story behind. Um, well, I have to say that first we were meeting after high school like three four no five six seven seven years, seven years after high school yeah. we kind of met up and we were you know hanging out and talking about different things and then we were watching a lot of youtube videos yeah and commentating and and reviewing some videos like you know just chatting mm. and then an idea came to your mind or my mind i don't remember which one it was it was more of like a collective within within our like social circle yeah uh, whoever we would hang out with the most as like this we sort of like end up making a little group mm. um, that we would hang out with yeah and there were a lot of creative people so Shout out to Kim, the one who makes the beats, <laughs> and he's going to be making new beats as well. You can go and check check out his uh, YouTube account and Instagram account. Uh, he he used to hang out with us as well. Yeah, he was part of like the whole, the whole like. And he setting. is kind of part of this con vision, but in a in yeah. a different way. So we came up with with a concept that we would do some cooking videos. Mm. and show people how how to cook easy and good food yeah that was a that was a pretty good idea mm. but it's just like the executing was it just became a bit of a hassle so the whole thing 
Mm. It kept getting delayed. Yeah, there were many obstacles, I would say. Mm. One of the obstacles was I didn't have any camera. Mm. I did have phone camera, but not like a proper, proper DHLR. Uh, I didn't have, well, I, I did have my laptop, but I didn't know anything, how yeah. to do anything at all. Mm. And uh, when I bought my camera, it still got delayed because, you know, I had no previous experience with a proper camera. So I got into photography. Mm. So I started taking pictures with my phones and then I started to take pictures with my DHLR. I was like, you know what? I paid for this and it's like, you know, gathering all the dust in the shelves. Mm. I need to do something about this. Yeah, and how you how you got to it was pretty amazing. That with that, we just start hanging out. We get introduced to this guy, um, um and we just start hanging out like with him, uh, aside of the guy who, who uh, introduced us to him. And it was it was really cool that he took us with him to his like photo shoots and that is very important uh, aspect that you just said. Mm. I just uh, totally forgot. So shout out to Obelixi. Go check his Instagram out. With uh, a Y. Yeah. So O Obelixi. Yeah, and he is one of the inspiring photographers that I know. Such a humble guy, down to earth. And we did some crazy stuff. He taught me a lot of photography. And you know, the cool thing about him is that he never looked down upon me. Mm. He always keep, kept inspiring. He like, hey, mm. just keep doing photography. You know, do you, don't think what other people, you know, mm. might think. Just as long as you like your photography, that's the most important part. Mm. So he kind of <clears throat> guided me towards this artistic path. Yeah. Right. And, and we did some crazy stuff. So we uh. we climbed climbed up a crane. Yeah. <laughs> it was crazy, man, because I'm afraid of heights. Yeah. And here I am listening to this mentor of mine, <laughs> you know, taking me all the way. It was a beautiful view. Uh. Um, you know, I was a bit scared. And um, it's, it's, just it's shame that I didn't get good shots. So, <laughs> But it was what it was. Yeah. But good experience, I have to say. So afterwards, you know, time passes, you had your own place. Yeah. And we were thinking to record the sessions in your place. Yeah. But that didn't happen that mm. often. But when it did, mm. we did, we did that one noodle noodles experiment. Yeah, noodle chicken with um, you fried made chicken. A, you made a fried chicken with eggs. Yeah, yeah, fried noodles with eggs and, yeah. and chicken. It was like a, a way of like showing how you can how you can have a healthy diet with a, a small budget, mm. which, which was a pretty useful. Do you still things. remember that session? Yeah, I still remember. It was quite hard because I didn't know anything about lighting, and even if you look at my first videos, it's um, mm. the quality is totally different. I try to do things in a mm. in a better way each time i do something yeah. but yeah man i mean we did we never edited that one out or did we yeah we didn't get to yeah like we had we had that problem with the sd card mm. and it it just it didn't record any of it the stuff or yeah and and the lighting was bad we didn't have any proper lighting mm. i mean it was improvised those kind of like uh Remember the clipper, the the lamps with the clipper, the small ones. Mm. They would just attach it to some corner and try mm. to like. I mean, we didn't have a lot of stuff. We didn't have like a mic, uh. like shotgun mic, for for the uh. for the camera. You know. Yeah, it wasn't like this one. It yeah, was... and and the other one that you put on top of the DHLR. Yeah, that one was like. Yeah, and and short. then you know after time passed, I got my own place. Mm. And still, I didn't do any production. I was still busy, you know, moving stuff around and, yeah. you know, changing jobs and whatnot. Mm. But then one thing happened. Once things got a bit of, uh, a bit of settled down, mm. I started making vlogs. Yeah, when the storm settled. Yeah. You remember those vlogs days? Yeah. 
I, I think those were still pretty good episodes. Yeah, I, I still keep them in my hard drive. No way. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Just to look back and ponder and reflect, you know, where it all started. And mm. and there are some of the stuff that kind of worked. Yeah. You, you know, I wouldn't say that they're totally bad, mm. but they need some uh, polishing, I would say. Oh, you could say. But for the first pieces, I, I think... I think it was pretty was pretty great that where where you were at already then, mm. uh, and that's where like my my like belief in this whole the whole project that we would uh, soon develop it just it just increased even more and it, that that made my summer so much more exciting. Mm. I was just excited about um, like what the visions of the future that I've, like based on based on analysis what I've like analyzed and mm. I what I see the future to be like. Mm. So it just like I just saw like, hey, this guy's kicking this off now. Mm. Um, the only thing I saw was that we just gotta get the projects rolling. Yeah, it's always like this thing that you know the steps. You just need to do one at a time, mm. and the more you wait or have like sort of a gap between the less motivated you are to do it mm -hmm. so i think that's very important part of the whole thing yeah but how did you when we started to meet you rem remember when i was in high school i used to go and give speeches in different places yeah back then i actually didn't know that you did that yeah i just started on that you know, when mm. I was in 16, 15 years old. Really? Yeah. Wow. I, I always, you know, I still remember when I was like seven years old, I had to recite Quran in front of, you know, a massive audience wow. or sing, you know, some kind of Islamic song in this like Muslim gathering thing. Mm. So, and I was super nervous, but I got my training from there of public, public speaking and performance overall. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that's like that's an amazing experience. Yeah, I, it's, I it's scary, yeah. but once you once you've done it, you know you feel awesome. You feel alive. Mm. It's the thing about you know going through an extreme pressure. Mm. After the pressure, it's just you know smooth. Pressure makes diamonds. Yeah. Am I diamond? Anyway, <laughs> so right like a diamond. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So the thing is that people say follow your passion and you should be doing things that makes you happy. Mm. Not happy, more like fulfills you as yeah. a person, makes you into better. You know, what whatever you are into. Mm. I I did notice that that I'm into speaking and performing. Mm. But I didn't know how to pursue that. You mm. see, there isn't. There is a lot of speakers, but you know, professional speakers. You know, just get mu paid for speaking. Mm -hmm. There aren't much people like that. Would you agree? Well, Not nowadays, so yeah. Nowadays, you have. I mean, you have standard comedians, and mm. then you have, you know, ra artists that sings a song. Mm. politicians who give speeches, mm. teachers or trainers who give training and what not and what not, but you don't have like specific role as a speaker. Mm. You, you understand what I'm trying to say here? Yeah, that's not like a it's not the byproduct of another task. Yeah, it's it's a <laughs> part of many tasks or mm. many professions, but it's not a profession itself. Yeah. Unless you're like radio host or something like that. Yeah. So when we were, uh, when I was growing up and going through school, we had to think about these different, you know, professions that we need to take mm. in. And speaker is not one of those yeah. that they promote. Mm. So it was hard for me to navigate and understand. And I just knew that I was good at presenting things, you know. Mm. And um, from my school years, I remember that, I used to take a lot of Im improvisation courses yeah. or, or theater courses. Mm. 
theater courses. Yeah. Whoa. Live performance. I don't know. Now that it seems like I was destined to do that, but at the time, I don't know what got me into those courses. Mm. I was in this one drama that we did. Uh, There were a bunch of dudes just, or kids, Mm. and no girls. And I dressed myself as a Snow White and we made like a Snow White movie. (laughs) But obviously we didn't do all the kissings and whatnot, but we made like a parody of Snow White. Yeah. And it was, uh, it was very interesting experience. And, Mm. and I remember like after end of that course, we had to play the play in front of our rest of the classmates and they were, Mm. they were laughing and, you know, like (laughs) something about live performance and making the, audience react to your things mm. it just creates this rush how did you feel when they they have like a p- positive response to your performance your i feel like when you're playing a soccer and you score a goal well. you feel the same way because <laughs> you do something that the audience is like yeah. paying attention and they want to be entertained the yeah. entertainment is the main thing yeah uh, humor is i think a uh, w- a very good way to break the ice between the people, the, to break down the tension between peoples. Yeah, there's a there's something about m- making people laugh and making them putting a smile on their faces. It yeah, there's some kind of biological response that comes. It's, from almo- it. it's almost like you are doing a service to a person. Yeah, to to the person and to yourself. Yeah, yeah. Because you feel great about making another person great. Mm. So it's like. Uh, mutual benefit sort of mm. yeah so after this um the vlogging session i i think it was you or some other people or a bunch of people were talking about joe rogan podcast and i was mm. listening to other podcasts mm. and once i started to listen to joe rogan's podcast and i was like wow this guy is you know doing something really interesting yeah. that i could see myself doing it and one of the reasons i didn't like the vlog or the idea of the vlogs is because it 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 felt too artificial it felt like Mm. i'm acting in front of people i know know what you mean so i was like having this crisis that is this being phony and you know i'm like showing too much of my private life you know Mm. i'm showing where i'm going where i'm eating Mm. you know what kind of stuff i'm doing so it, it was a bit of a scary thing to do you know mm. to show a lot about your life and i know like uh, some of my friends they didn't mind to be in the vlogs but some of them did mm. you know and it, it raises a lot of questions mm. but i still i think i'm still going to have the possibility of making vlogs in the future still mm. in my mind they might be different type of but not daily vlogs mm. Because daily vlogging is, it's not impossible, but it consumes a lot of time. Yeah, it gets, it gets tedious when you're doing the same thing all the time. I mean, in that, in that sense that you're, you have to, every single day, it, it starts to feel like a chore. Yeah, well, it doesn't have to always, but I feel like you're living in camera more than you're living in real life. <laughs> and I think that... That is something that bothers me a little bit. Yeah. You know. Yeah, I can understand that. Yeah, because I think we spend too much time on electronics and all the gadgets Mm. uh, overall. So we should focus more on person to person. Mm. But anyway, let's continue in the next clip. How do you react under pressure? Yeah, you're talking about like... Uh, overall pressure or just in front of the stage yeah like in correlation to like uh the the performance you had with the class Mm. or or with a group that you you did on in that in that theater performance the thing is when i was growing up Mm. you know my dad is like imam and he talks he has a lot of you know religious talk uh, you know talks or ceremonies in front of people Mm -hmm. and i I grew up watching him performing because, you know, that that is a performing speech is more performing than just the words that you say. It's the intent that you have. I notice certain things that works, 
you know, how the audience reacts to his talk. And then I notice certain things that doesn't work. Mm. Okay. So I make two lists in my head. Okay. Things you should do and things you shouldn't do, you know, things to do and things to avoid. Mm. And then you apply that on yourself. And you, and every time I see a performance, someone talking or having a speech, I become very analytical, you know, about this speech because I think spe- speech is really fascinating, you know. Some people can fall into sleep by listening to a boring speech or get motivated just by listening to some, just seeing someone talking, right? Did did I include body language? Yes, body language is very important. Body language shows all about how comfortable you are. And the Mm. fact is that nobody is comfortable in front of hundreds of people. It goes back to the point that there are things you can do and things you can't do. Mm. The things you can control and things you can't control. So focusing on things you can control, you know, one of them, those things are preparing yourself properly, you know, for the speech. Know what you're going to talk. When you realize that, okay, these are the things I need to control and, you know, just slowly taking baby steps and, and knowing that, you know, people who are listening to this or any of uh, any person talking, they don't focus on the mistakes right. unless they are there to point out your mistakes. Mm. That's valuable. Yeah, but I think that's one of the thing about speaking is that people don't really know how nervous you are. Mm. People don't really know how much you are scared unless you tell them, oh, I'm scared, I'm nervous. Mm. And that's one of the rookie mistakes. You say, oh, I didn't prepare myself properly. Why, why do you say that? Does that add any value? You yeah. shouldn't ever say things that doesn't add any value. Be quiet instead of, you know, saying things that doesn't help anyone. You oh, know? yeah. What you say I am um, becomes who you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, it doesn't, it doesn't help if I say that, oh, I'm, I'm nervous. Mm. Okay, good. But you're not here to become nervous. You're here to deliver a point mm. and do that. And you can you have to fail mm. through failures. You learn. And for me, it's, it's the failures that I learn from. And also by watching other people's mistake, what mm. other people are doing wrong or what other people are doing right. You know, a lot of my editing comes from, you know, other YouTubers that I, check their you know how how they do it and you know there are many pages where they tell you okay this is the little tricks you can do to make your videos look better and whatnot wow. and and the cool thing about this whole thing is you are never a master there is always something you can learn mm. so that's one of the topics that i was talking last week mm. about lifelong learning if you are a learner if you take the role of learner instead of a master then mm. you continuously master your skills mm. you know it's, it's like um um being an apprentice to many people yeah or everyone you come across you try to like take an apprenticeship and learn from them yeah but that's i, I can really dope. relate to that yeah and that that's that's the way to forward because we human beings we need to each other to become better and that's that was one of the reasons I started this podcast as well. I wanted to share some of the experience that I have with with my mentors and and my friends that know a lot. I have people who knows how to cook. I learned a lot lot of stuff from them. Mm -hmm. You know, people how to deal with life. I know people who know about nutrition. I know people who know about fighting. I know people who know about computers. I know people who know about religion. Mm -hmm. You know, and I connect with these people and I find myself interested in the topic and, Mm -hmm. and it's like a fun time for me. I don't, I don't look at it as, you know, it's a, it's a job or, Mm -hmm. Or, you know, I, I must do this. It's more like, oh, I like to do this. It's like um, like uh, sharing passion yeah. with people. So it's like you're exchanging, you're exchanging what you know and they're exchanging a lot about what they know as well. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Do you care about what people think? Of course I do. Anyone who says that they don't care what people think about you. Mm. You know, I would like to say that I don't care, but I actually do care a lot. Mm. I think you care a lot what people do. Oh, you know, say. Yeah, the reason why w- the reasons why we take shower, brush our teeth, and you know dress mm. nicely is just to so that people can appreciate us, and you know they look, mm. you know at least they don't have anything negative to say about us. Mm. But 
I do look at the points that people are trying to make. Mm. So if someone criticizes my videos or my podcasts, okay, the sound and lighting, uh, lighting is not right. I take that feedback because it's mm. true. You know, I'm not mastering that. But mm. if someone says, oh, uses the N word or, you know, say something bad about me that isn't true or mm. about my skin color, then, you know, I, there's no point taking that in because I, I didn't choose my skin color. I didn't chose this name. Mm. I did chose Khan Vision, though, because <laughs> it's an awesome name. Yeah, but, it but it's, you know, like my name and all this stuff, I didn't, you know, it's it's out of my control. Mm. Yeah, that's that's very reasonable. Mm. Uh, you, you can't If you can't change it, then why focus on it? Have you ever experienced depression? Yeah. Yeah, I have actually, you know. Mm. And I think depression is one of those things that there are different levels to it. And there was this one time that I was super depressed. Mm. I had a gig at at the working, uh, uh, you know, like I was working at one place and they promised me that I can work there for a longer time. And it was actually pretty good, but I didn't Mm. get to work there. And it... Uh, for Where was it? Uh, I don't want to mention the places <laughs> and stuff, but you know, it's it's um, it was an IT company and mm. management issues or something. But anyway, long sto- long story short, I didn't get the gig, mm. so I was just there for the trial per- period, and it was really depressing mm. because I started to question my own skills. Mm. And and my foreman in that place, they said, "Hey, it has nothing to do with you. It's it's like our company doesn't need anyone right now." Mm. So it, it's still, you know, even if they say that, it still gets to you. Mm. And I remember I wasn't doing anything; I was just eating junk food and mm. watching series and whatnot. Feeling rejected. Yeah, feeling mm. rejected. Exactly. That's that's how you can describe that. Mm. And then afterwards, there was this one day. I was watching and listening to David Goggins, you know, podcast and Joe Rogan's podcast. Mm -hmm. David Goggins was talking about um, how he got through in life. Mm. Then I was like, you know what? This guy runs every day and he's such, you know, full of, he's expecting troubles and he's expecting, you know, the life to kick, Mm -hmm. you know, shit out of him but still he gets up and you know he fights Mm. he doesn't quit even if he goes down he goes like down like a fighter Mm. you know and then i was like you know what i want to be a fighter i don't want to be afraid of anything i don't want to be afraid of Mm. you know i list things down what i was afraid of i was afraid of become being broke i was afraid of you know not having faith Mm. in anything i was afraid of becoming negative person i was afraid Mm. of becoming you know like obese and whatnot Mm. so i started to list things down that bothers me then i was like listing solutions for that okay in order to not becoming broke you know not to become a broke you need to work in order to you know stay fit you need to exercise in order to become a man of faith then you need to exercise your faith you know Mm. in order to you know so i wanted to i i started to write things down and i think that helps me a lot you know it gives me clarity Mm. where to go and what is bothering me so i did that and i promised myself that i will run every single day or exercise every single day i will take no day off as long as i didn't get a job because i didn't because i didn't have anything else to do Mm. i started a podcast and i was you know exercising exercising and doing stuff you know Mm. filling up your life with with something at least yeah like they say idle mind is devil's playground Uh, and we we waste a lot of time i was like hey i'm not there where i want to be but i will never be there where i want to be Mm. if I don't start to get my act right and mm. start to do things that needs to be done for me to get where I want to be. That's true. I think the thing, you know, what helped me the most is exercising in depression, exercising, get things together, you know, clean the place where you are, mm. you know, cle- cleaning things gives you clarity. Mm. Exercise gives you a clarity of mind. Mm. You know, these things do things then you have less time to worry the more you worry the bigger your you know depression becomes 
Well, uh, that that reminded me of this one this one mantra that I would have because of my my muscle condition. Mm. I, I have this like muscular dystrophy. Mm. Um, it has to do with like muscle weakness, and mm. when it's cold, then I feel like pain in the bones and the knees mostly, mm. and then sort of like radiates through the bones. Mm. Uh, so I, I my way of like dealing through that was through meditation, and I would mantra. As in the body, so in the mind. As in the mind, so in the body. Mm. To to remind myself that, however my body works, my mind is always in control. Mm. Mm. And that neurolo- neurology, because it's it's considered as a neurological condition. Mm. So each each summer, every year, I have this like um, we go through uh, how I've been doing and mm. and how it's is it progressing or is it is it uh degenerative so so i i sort of like connected that as that the mind controls the body the body controls the mind mm. that that is true i mean you have to keep your mind busy you have to keep, and if you don't have anything to keep your mind busy then keep your body busy you know mm. work work out and and you know that's the way to it you know yeah and I, th- i think i think what helped me there mostly was there's that saying that if you hang out with with five people mm. you become the sixth so i i sort of you're an average of your five closest friend yeah i think yeah, yeah exactly uh, that's actually actually a more uh more accurate description mm. uh, i i sort of like use that philosophy by spending more time around friends that worked out mm. and stayed had different ways of staying fit mm. so so it sort of like gave this uh sort of like a live gym motivation yeah that's and and that's how you get any kind of motivation overall did you have anyone by your side during because uh, everyone who has depression in their life mm. who's like a, a high performance um type of person expects a lot from themselves mm they they go through cycles of depression mm. so it it comes back every now and then mm. who helped you in your life to shorten the the length of of your depression periods the, there are many good people around me you know you're one of them and and then there is a lot of Appreciate other that. <laughs> other <laughs> people uh, i'm not going to mention names you know some of them they don't probably want their name to be mentioned but i think there are different people for different kind of stuff and i ask different advices from different people mm. okay so someone who's a good fighter i'll ask you know advice about fighting mm. or someone who's a good bodybuilder i ask him about you know training so yeah i i would say my my parents they're always being very supportive you know and i always i feel privilege that I, I can always go to my parents house and you know just get peace of mind in there mm. and um, yeah but but the thing is i think the most important thing is that you need to have good people around you and they help you to get get better or you know get rid of depression mm. but if you don't fight it yourself it starts with yourself mm. even if you have everything laid out for you but you're not willing to do anything about it mm. then nothing's going to happen so you have to kind of rely on yourself you know mm. and it i think with you. yeah and i think a deep reflection that hey i need to push now otherwise i'm going to be crushed mm. you know like a rock coming to your head you can just worry about it and let it come closer to your head mm. or you can just snap out of it and say hey get get out of here and mm. and and move on like indiana jones with that that cave scene yeah. <laughs> you're like running away uh, if you fall you're gonna get crushed if you if you don't get up you're gonna get crushed mm. uh, that's that was a good example <laughs> yeah you need good Rock people around thing. you but it starts with yourself and there are some people that, that didn't have anyone but they had themselves mm. so you know any kind of exercise where you can or any kind of activity that helps you to bring self esteem it's it's a good thing and doing more things mm. you start to associate that hey i can do things you know and you can you start to associate that hey i know how to edit videos i know how to you know edit pictures i know this and that mm. so indulge yourself 
with the craft any kind of craft it gives you it gives you a confidence it it gives you an identity to yourself and you know we human beings one of the scariest thing is that if we die without an identity mm. that scares us us all mm. that's why we indulge in different kind of activities i think one of the reasons why we indulge wow that's amazing <laughs> you know you know it just flashed in my mind the idea that we can we can put all this into one word the solution mm. to depression mm. uh the solution to depression progression progression exactly so yeah. it's like, just keep working on that you'll get the fire one day don't be depressed be progressed <laughs> yeah but i i have to say that we ain't no medical professionals mm. so i'm just saying what works for me carlo is saying what's worked for him yeah you know maybe some some of this might help you but you know maybe some other people are having harder issues to deal with mm. sharing sharing our, our perspective about mm. how, how we see life and what helps us like, get through get through hard times and mm. and like leap over challenges mm. What's the thing that really drives um, us to to succeed in anything mm. we're doing? That's very important for for people to to hear such things. Even though it's all over YouTube, people aren't necessarily not many are necessarily looking for it. But mm. that's that's something we can't say. Uh, have you had any regret in your life, or do you have any right mm. now? I have had many regrets in my life. Some are bigger than others, mm. but I didn't. I don't believe that it helps to dwell on those mm. regrets. What has happened has happened. You can't do anything about it. Move on. Mm. You know, like I said, and this is a constant theme that I've been saying, there are things you can't control and things you can't control. Mm. What you have done, you can't control that. But what you will be doing, you can control that. So focus your energy on that mm. because it helps you to, <laughs> in, in the future. But, you know, mm. um, if you've done a mistake, you know, yeah, you know, sleep over it, regret it, mm. and then move on. Don't think too much about it because mm. it will mess you up. That's you previously, and you mm. can be better and learn from that rather than, mm. you know, blame others or yourself. Don't become a victim. Mm. Victimhood doesn't help you anywhere, you know. You just become a bitter person and you start to hate everyone. Yeah, you know, I, I think that's the, that's the biggest issue we have in at least according to everything that I've seen in my life and what I'm seeing now, what I've been analyzing, just my, my personal point of view is that that's the biggest issue people are having in this world, why there's people depressed, why there's like these, all these different movements. It's like a, it's like a reaction to what they've been through in their lives and um, everything we have now in this time. It, makes the reaction so much more different mm. we know a lot more we're not we're not as blissful as as like in the past it was possible to be mm. So mm. you have the internet you can see everything online mm. you see all the bad stuff you see all the good stuff yeah yeah and and it all affects you whatever you see it affects you yeah positively or negatively yeah, yeah because of like struggling with like trying to get along with family those mm. kind of mm. those kind of people that might have had like a bit of a bumpy step with family mm. usually have this that they start they start feeling sorry for themselves and start gravitating towards the negative mm. and mm. that just pushes you more in that direction it, it's sort of like the opposite of uh like what we've been talking about now mm. it's the opposite of where we've been going if you steer towards goodness things will become better if you steer towards bad things will become worse mm. it's simple as that but it's hard to see when you're depressed you know and yeah things are, things are hard yeah we sort of get am amnesia from that mm. is there you really hold as important in your life yeah of course i mean how many people do you have that are the the closest to you that know you inside out sort of like let's say because uh, usually people have these friend can have these friendships where they they sort of like just know the friend inside out. Uh, do you have like a family member or a, yeah, uh, someone who knows you inside out? Completely? Yeah, I think from my family, my younger brother, and I will bring him to this po podcast in the future. My younger brother is definitely 
one of those people who knows and my cousin Zubair who, who has been mm-hmm. in the podcast talking about UFC it's in, those are the closest amongst my family mm-hmm. i feel the most closest uh, Zubair is like brother to me i don't even look at him as a cousin mm-hmm. and then i have other other people i used to live with this one guy mm-hmm. uh, and then i have one of my neighbors he's been on this podcast as well mm-hmm. you know you know you are one of those people That's and then nice. then i have other people that i can't you know mention their names they don't want their names to be mentioned mm-hmm. but yeah uh, those are the people that knows a lot about me oh yeah some of them will show in the and you know will come to this show and some of them won't mm. but i'll try to get them all here yeah these are the people that really help us through mm. through all our hard times and mm. try to understand us and guide us through the storm mm. because they, they care and sometimes we can't we can't really see how much someone cares mm. because it's it's really difficult to show when someone's having a hard time that's true is there an item or some kind of prized possession you you really value uh, the one item sort of like the the most close person you've had the the item you value the most some something that someone else gave me or some w- which is the most important item something me. either you got or that you you have sentimental value for yeah i think i think my laptop is one of those you know mm. and i'm going to buy a new one but even if this laptop is broken i think i'll just frame it and put it in the wall because it's it's been through a lot this is my first laptop i ever bought mm. you know and i <laughs> i've done so many works i i done my thesis on this i i done video editing with this so i think this left laptop laptop defines me in a weird way that's amazing <laughs> i can kind of see that <laughs> yeah like all the stickers it it just shows where you've been and um what what kind of places you've been around mm. it really like makes the laptop i always get attention because mm. of the stickers You you really know how to articulate something with um a sort of like a artisticness to it. I th- I think that everything is art, you know. It's just the way you do it. It becomes an art. Mm. You can do it the boring way or you can do it the interesting way and that's what we call art. Yeah, <laughs> and plus big. I've been I've been, you know, representing different organizations in different places so i need to kind of know how to answer in the effective way that everyone gets most out of it mm. like my mother always says think big or go home <laughs> yeah for sure for sure what's your motto in life and or philosophy philosophy in life uh, th- there are a bunch of philosophies but when it comes to the work you know try as hard as you can is there always keep asking asking yourself is there any way better to do this is there any better way of doing something prepare yourself as much as you can because the more you prepare yourself the more advantage you have i think those are like when it comes to my mm-hmm. work ethic then you know always be real you know don't be fake Mm-hmm. be yourself if any if it's cost I'm going to cost something you know? <laughs> you know but it, there is no point of being not you you yeah. know that's that's sad if you lived a life that you didn't even want to live yeah and then avoid drama there are people that just wants the reaction out of you yeah just avoid it you know mm-hmm. it doesn't it's not worth of your time mm-hmm. that's what it is and and live in the present moment and try to create value to as many people as as possible. My mine is quite short. I only have two sentences on it. Mm. It's it's sort of like that that meditation mantra. Mm. I seek, I see, I see, I seek. So I, I that sort of like drives me and I just want to I just want to stay and be that constantly hungry. Yeah, I try, I try to find like really short terms for for many things that mm. like uh one sentence can mean many things to me yeah yeah i see what Turn you mean 
you so, like deep insights to things yeah yeah I, re- i really like those kind of like deep things and philosophies mm. uh, that's, and that's why we're friends basically man yeah uh, that's what keeps our friendship going on yeah that was pretty much my <laughs> biggest question about about the model because i was very curious about mm. how what what's your model in life what do you see for a future what can you tell the the audience like um <laughs> What's it, what's in store for Mutagi Khan in the coming future? Khan future, Khan vision, Khan future. <laughs> Maybe I should start another show called Khan future. Uh, what's the Khan vision <sighs> outside I, of what you're showing right now? Well, the show, I hope it increases value in people's life. I hope I'm worth of their time. Mm. You know, that I always keep that in my mind. I know that I don't deserve any following but i try to deserve some following you know i try to make myself relevant and useful i mm. really appreciate you know people who are following and watching the show i want to make it more interesting bring you know more different kind of guests people that mm. i don't really know now i'm still bringing some people from my network you know but i like in the future i want to bring people that i know don't know i want to you know be part of something positive you know step out of your comfort zone yeah and i want to bring you know i think the news and everything the media is kind of negative is because mm-hmm. one of the reason is because we react to negative things more emotionally mm-hmm. you know so i want to bring a positive media you know that's like my vision mm-hmm. is to bring positiveness out in the media industri- industry industry that's very nah. inspiring I, th- i think i think you're going to succeed like you keep and keep me, this up and it's gonna <laughs> yeah and 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 the whole thing is if i improve myself and i show other people how to improve themselves mm-hmm. or they can learn something then together we become more stronger and you know the whole society becomes more stronger and more relevant yeah build, build a future that you want to see yeah that's very nice like uh Now now we live in a good time that you you have we have the opportunity to to reach more people um as as human beings so mm. it's good to utilize that connection. I really appreciate having this talk and getting this chance to like do our first uh, podcast episode together. Yeah. I've I've been waiting for about three years for this moment. Yeah, man, it finally happened. Yeah. And welcome aboard, you know, Carlo Corhon and he will be editing these videos. I mean, I'm I'm going to be part of the editing process as well. Mm. But Carlo has um, you know, interest in this and he's the new creative producer of Con Vision. Mm. You you're like the young Jamie in the <laughs> in the Joe <laughs> Rogan's podcast. <laughs> yeah. So let's see and and you know, one of the things that is going to happen in the future is mm. We're gonna make everything as you know, as good as possible, and and continuously invest on this stuff. So the setup, the intro, everything is gonna change. Hey, so nice. good to have you on board. Yeah, thanks, man. I'm, I appreciate that. And if you like this show, make sure that you give the thumbs up and subscribe to this YouTube channel. More podcasts is coming on the way. You know how it is, Khan Vision style.